Hi, I'm John Hallquist, the CEO of Livermore Software Technology Corporation, which I founded uh, well over 30 years ago uh, to continue the development of software that I released into the public domain while I worked at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. At the Lawrence Livermore Lab, uh, there's a certain amount of uh, development that's not possible because it's not relevant to their programs. And since the software was in the public domain, it was already being developed by companies for automotive crash simulation and other types of engineering design purposes. At that time, the computers were basically Cray vector machines with uh, multiple processors and they would run in parallel with a shared memory uh, type uh, implementation. While I was in high school, I more or less decided I wanted a job where I would have job mobility and uh, be technically challenged. And the only uh, job that seemed reasonable, or the only profession that seemed reasonable at the time was engineering. And because I have a real fascination with things that are mechanical, uh, I decided I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. I wanted a job where I would be able to uh, have job mobility, move around the country if, if I needed to, but would always be employable. My father uh, worked as a pattern maker in a foundry, so he made the patterns that are used in the sand casting. And uh, I'd often go to the factory to drop my father's lunch off because he'd forget to take it and uh, we'd run through the factory, find him, and then give him the lunch. And uh, the, the factory environment was of tremendous interest because there were so many different machines and so many different people doing different things. Towards the end of my college career, the year before I would do to graduate, I got a job working in an industrial engineering department. And at that point, I got a rude awakening in that industrial engineering is relatively uh, at least in this job, was very boring. Plus there was countless meetings, plus countless paperwork, plus you had to worry about interacting with the workers and uh, supervising and everything I really detested. And that's when I decided I had to go into a field that was more theoretical and more challenging, uh, where I could look at problems that uh, where I could really learn a lot while I tried to work out a solution. In 1965, when I graduated from high school, uh, like most of the kids in our class in Hamilton, Michigan, we went to the most inexpensive university we could find, and uh, Western Michigan University was closest to Holland. And by working summers from the time I was 14, I had saved quite a bit of money so I could cover the tuition and some of the boarded room. And uh, so consequently, I majored in industrial engineering at Western Michigan University. I, I really enjoyed the classes. It was only when I actually had to start performing in an industrial engineering department, I realized that was the wrong choice. As I was graduating from Western Michigan, I started applying for uh, graduate school. I was offered a full fellowship by Michigan Technological University, majored in engineering mechanics, which is a theoretical part of mechanical engineering. And uh, while I was there, I took all the necessary courses that they offered in that field in the mechanical engineering department. Plus, I realized my mathematics background was quite weak, so I took countless, uh, it seemed like countless, undergraduate courses in mathematics from the mathematics department to build up my theoretical skills. After three, three and a half years, I finally graduated. I was very, very fortunate to be hired by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the Nuclear Test Engineering Department to look at problems uh, in, in the nuclear test engineering division. They farmed me out to the physics department to work on vulnerability. 
And at that time, I started running a, a lot of their codes uh, that, that were used uh, widely in the physics department. And these codes were very, very impressive. And uh, they were extremely fast compared to the engineering codes. An opening occurred in Nuclear Explosives Engineering Division for a software development to look at uh, one of the new weapon systems they were uh, developing. They had no software to analyze it with, and that's the origins of uh, Dyna 3D. But the big breakthrough came with the advent of the Cray-1 when they brought that into the Lawrence Livermore lab. And uh, at that time, the Cray-1 and the CDC-7600 on the same source code would run basically the same speed, so it required complete recoding for vectorization. And uh, at that time, I was able to get more than a factor 10 to 20 in speed by fully vectorizing Dyna 3D. So I really developed uh, very good programming skills and I realized that the most important thing is the speed and accuracy of the simulations. So I think the crowning achievement that set everything off was the development of Dyna 3D. I had it released into the public domain so it was available to everyone worldwide. In 1983 or 84, the Reagan administration said we need tra technology transfer from the national labs and the labs should encourage their employees to do consulting work. So I started doing consulting work as well on off hours. And eventually I consulted with over 40 companies before I finally uh, left the Lawrence Livermore lab and started uh, uh, LSTC. I don't really have, I would say, any achievements outside of my career because I'm really interested in the software development, I'm really interested in the physics, and uh, I've virtually had uh, no interest in things outside the software development and learning more and more about the technologies and uh, problems that other that companies have that they need to need to solve. I, I love anything that's that's old and mechanical such as the old safes. I have uh, safes from a bank from 1895. The safe behind me is from a naval ship from 1916 and then I have some old jeweler safes that are uh, composite construction uh, and in these safes I, I just store stuff that uh, I have interest in that I don't want to lose. If it's locked in the safe I can always find it. If I keep it out then I can never find it because it gets buried in all the other stuff I have. In order to bring together everything into one software, all the field equations of physics and so on, you have to have some basic understanding of what can be possible. But uh, you can't be an expert in all these areas. So I want to know as much as possible and there's not enough time. My son's been critical since about when he was still in, I'd say, eighth grade onward. He, he's started taking over all the system management for our software. He actually implemented the Linux on our computers and he communicated with uh, Linus in Finland at the time. The uh, servers that we were using, he could go in and uh, pretty much solve the problem. And so he grew up uh, every night after school coming home and then he'd work on the uh, hardware and the software first in my home and then when we moved to an office he'd come to the office after high school and then work every night two or three hours. Other members of my family have always been, been quite supportive and uh, especially when I left the lab I had no idea whether I'd be successful because uh, uh, the 
people who had committed to leave the lab with me to start the company, uh, their families talked to them about, uh, well, you have a full, a fully secure job, you'll have an excellent pension in 15 or 20 years, uh, you know what you have, if you leave and join a new company, uh, it's really risky. I never got that from my family. Uh, they, they were always willing to go with anything I wanted to go with. And uh, once I left the Lawrence Livermore lab, I promised myself I would never go back. If a company failed, I would move to Detroit and work with some of the uh, companies I was familiar with in Detroit. But uh, yeah, my family was never uh, questioning my decision. That's, it's really hard to say how I'd like to be remembered. It'd be nice to be remembered. Uh, but I, th I think primarily for the, the software developments and the influence our software has had on our competitors, I think we're very much watched by our competitors. And uh, uh, so I think overall in the community that we compete in, we've had a tremendous influence and, we re and because they need to compete with us, uh, it's really benefited, I think, engineers worldwide.